Merry Christmas. Man, it is so great just to say that. Merry Christmas, and thank you so much for joining me tonight. My name is Ian. I'm the pastor at Hillside, and I'm thrilled to be spending Christmas Eve with you. This is, without a doubt, one of the greatest nights of the year, every single year, as we celebrate the birth of Jesus. Okay, I get it. This is not how we normally celebrate Christmas Eve. Normally, we're packed at the sanctuary. We are elbow to elbow. The organ is pumping. The brass band is playing. The violinists are violining, and everyone's just kind of singing their hearts out. So let me tell you our plan for tonight. The plan is this. We are going to read the Christmas story. We're going to spend some time praying. We're going to talk about how Jesus and Christmas and everything else connects to us. We're going to have a guest video. And most importantly, I'm going to invite you to join in with me. Normally, we're just packed in. And so I encourage you, if you're watching with someone else and you're comfortable, just snuggle up to them tonight. Cozy in. Or if you're watching on your own or you don't want to be that close to that person, grab some pillows, a blanket, whatever. Just kind of squish yourself in a little bit so you feel that closeness. If you've got an instrument at home, maybe you have a dusty recorder or French horn or flute or something laying around and you want to play it, run and grab it now. We're going to end tonight with uh, just a a big sing-along, some of our favorite carols. And... Normally, we would end uh, this evening with Silent Night by Candlelight. And so if you want to light a candle at home, uh, now is your chance to run and grab that too. Thank you so much for joining me as we gather together to celebrate the birth of Jesus, the Savior of the world. Let's start with a couple of songs. O oh, come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. O oh, come ye, O oh, come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him, born the King of angels. O oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him, Christ the Lord. Highest, most holy, light of light eternal, born of a virgin, a mortal. Comes. Son of the Father, now in flesh appearing. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him, Christ the Lord. Sing. Choirs of angels sing in exaltation. Sing, all ye citizens of heaven above. Glory to God, glory in the highest. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him, Christ the Lord. Angels we have heard on high, sweetly singing o'er the plains. And the mountains in reply, echoing their joyous strains. Oh, Gloria in excelsis Deo. Gloria in excelsis Deo. 
shepherds, why this jubilee? Why your joyous strains prolong? What the gladsome tidings be? Which inspire your heavenly? Here we go. Go. Oh, 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 oh. In excelsis Deo, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Come to Bethlehem and see Him whose birth the angels sing. Come adore on bended knee, Christ the Lord, the newborn King. Go, in excelsis Deo. Go, in excelsis. Let's pray as we get started. God of all life and truth and hope and goodness, we give you thanks tonight that we can gather together as your children. Even as we're scattered, we know that we're gathering with, with millions, even billions of other Christians around the world celebrating this great event, you coming in the flesh to us. God, I pray that wherever people are, wherever they're in their homes or their condo buildings, in their kitchens, their dining rooms, their, their living rooms, wherever they are, that they would hear from you tonight. You'd speak to them loudly and clearly about your incredible love for them. And whatever they're going through right now, maybe they're just having the night of their lives tonight, or, or maybe tonight's a real struggle. Maybe tonight there's a, an empty space at the table. I pray that you would meet each person in that as well, that they know your comfort, your hope, your peace. Lord, we turn our attention now to you, to your word, to your truth, to your goodness in our lives. And we just ask that you'd help us to receive all that you have in store for us. We ask this all in the mighty name of Jesus. We're going to turn now. We have a special guest joining us by video, so we're going to turn it over to them. Do not... Be afraid. Hello, everybody. It's me, Gabriel, everyone's favorite Christmas angel. And I have some very good news. I have recorded a Christmas album. I've titled the album COVID Sucks, and I want to punch it right in the face mask. But it won't steal my Christmas joy. Or, as some of my friends are calling it, C-S-A-I-W-T-P-I-R-I-T-F-M-B-I-T-W-S-M-C-J for short. On the album, you'll hear me singing some of my very favorite Christmas carols, including Away from the manger, you're not in a bubble. If we get caught, then we'll all be in trouble. Do you hear what I hear? What? I can't hear you. Do you hear what I hear? Take off your mask. I can't understand what you're saying. Well, this is a very special one for me this Christmas. We wish you would wear a face mask. We wish you would wear a face mask. We wish you would wear a face mask or get out of here. Also, Hark the herald angels sing Six feet away from the newborn king. If you want to have a very Merry Christmas, I suggest you order the album right now. Operators are standing by. If you don't order soon and it sells out, you'll have a very sad Christmas. And I've only ordered 18 billion copies. I'm hoping that's enough for the Christmas rush. Of course, we all know Jesus is the reason for all the celebrations. And what better way to celebrate him than singing along with my Christmas album? COVID sucks, and I want to punch it right in the face mask. But it won't steal my Christmas joy. I hope you do have a very, very merry Christmas, all of you. 
Oh, COVID sucks, COVID sucks, COVID sucks. Everybody, COVID sucks, COVID sucks, COVID sucks. Hey, COVID sucks, COVID sucks, COVID Why don't we sing another song together? Angels from the realms of glory wing your flight o'er all the earth. Ye who sang creation's story now proclaim Messiah's birth. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Sages, leave your contemplations, brighter visions beam afar. Seek the great desire of nations, you have seen his natal star. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. All creation join in praising God the Father, Spirit, Son. Evermore your voice is raising to the eternal three in one. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Well, we're going to turn to God's Word now and read part of the Christmas story from Luke's Gospel, uh, starting in Luke chapter 1 at verse 26. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who is said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month, for no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to be me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. Years ago, my family was all together for Christmas. This was probably 12 years ago, up at my parents' house in Quenell. They have this beautiful log house there. And we all gathered around, and I, I grabbed my guitar, and we started singing Christmas carols, and it was just a beautiful uh, moment together. I'm going to remember that forever. And one of the reasons I'll remember it is because as we were singing that song, Oh, Holy Night, as it gets higher and higher as you're singing, Oh, night divine. We got to that point, and my mom, for whatever reason, just bursted into full-on oper operatic soprano. Her voice was up in the rafters, and we all looked at my mom and just burst out laughing. I'm mean, going to remember that forever as I just think about the energy and the enthusiasm she put into those words. And I've been thinking about that song lately, especially the line that says... A thrill of hope, a weary world rejoices. Man, I can relate to those words, I think. And, and my hope for you is that as we spend a bit of time looking at the Christmas story, that you feel that thrill of hope and that even in the weariness of the world, that you're able to rejoice over this great news of Jesus. Let me read the next part of the Christmas story for you. It says this. 
In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. Okay, is there anything more wearying, more exhausting than giving birth? I don't think so. I mean, first of all, Mary's tired just from being pregnant for the last nine months. Then there's this journey that they have to go on, this government uh, census that's happening. Why they can't count people where they are, I don't know, but that's kind of government policy for you. So there they go, Mary and Joseph. And I don't know if you know the distance, it's around 140 kilometers from uh, Bethlehem to Nazareth, and that's easily a four or five day walk. And it would have taken them longer for sure because Mary was pregnant. I know in all the Christmas cards, all the nativities, there's this donkey there ready to carry Mary, but that's nowhere in the Bible. We have no evidence that there was actually a donkey or a foot spa or an Uber or any of those things to help out with this journey that they were on. So here they go, they're on their way there, and I mean, that would be wearisome. And then there's Joseph, he's trying to help Mary get there, Uh, he's trying to make some arrangements, kind of plan the route, and make sure they're traveling with other people so they were safe. And then who knows why there's no room for them when they get there. I mean, I don't know if he didn't uh, phone ahead in advance, I don't know if he didn't reach out to Travelocity and try and book something, I don't know if he just thought that, well, of course there'll be room for us somewhere but there's nothing. I mean, that just kind of takes the wind out of your sails, doesn't it, when you get there and there's no place to stay and then you're just kind of scrambling. And on top of all those other things, I mean, government policies separated from family, major life changes, I just wonder too if there just wasn't some relationship stress with Mary and Joseph. You know, just nine months earlier, Joseph had decided he was actually going to divorce Mary, that this whole thing about the baby that was God's was just... Too much for him to wrap his mind around until an angel showed up and said, no, Joseph, this is happening exactly like she said to you. You can trust her. And so they stick together. They stay together. I mean, pile that all together, and they had to have been just exhausted to the core. You know, it actually makes me think about you. How are you doing? Because we're going through so many of the same things. I mean, right now, there is a weariness in the world. We've been, for the last 10 months, every day, some official from the province gets up and says, this is how many people died yesterday, this is how many people are sick, this is how many beds are left in the ICU. I mean, that's not kind of uh, encouraging and uplifting news to hear day after day after day. There's all sorts of government policies. All you businesses are closed. No, wait, some of you can be open. Okay, you, this many people allowed in a store. I I mean, I don't know about you, our family almost every day, we leave the house for school. Then someone's like, masks. Oh, we forgot our masks. We all march back into the house. I don't know how often I've gotten halfway to the store and been like, oh, I need my mask. And then there's policies about uh, whose house you can go into. And if you live alone, you can go to this house, but not that house. And if you have a family, well, you can't go into any houses. And I mean, there's just a lot going on. People are, have lost jobs. They found other jobs. There's all sorts of uncertainty in the world. And that just kind of drains you, doesn't it? As it happens day after day after day after day. So if you're feeling weary today, I want you to know that you are not alone that we live in a weary world. And in that way, we can relate, I think, so easily, so quickly to Mary and Joseph, who were also feeling weary. Add on to that the fact that it's Christmas Eve. I mean, isn't Christmas just kind of come with all of its own pressures and pulls and strains on its own? 
I got to tell you that I am totally guilty of putting those pressures on myself and my family because I, I just want it all to be so good. I love Christmas so much. I want everything to work out and not just Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. I want the whole month lead up like all of Advent to just be perfect. No pressure on that. I want it to be perfect. I want it to snow. Thank goodness it's been snowing a little bit for us. I, I, want, uh, I want everyone to get exactly what they want and to open up their gifts and say, oh, thank you, Mom. Thank you, Dad. I love you so much. You're the best. But I don't want to break the bank buying the presents. I mean, balance that out somehow. Uh, I, want, I want to do all the Christmas stuff and go see all the things that we're allowed to go see, but I don't want to feel rushed. I want all the food and the decorations and the baking to be absolutely perfect, but I also want them to all be effortless. I mean, there's all these things that we kind of pile on to Christmas. So again, if you are feeling weary out there, you're not alone. You know, not only are you not alone because of Mary and Joseph, but we're told about another group who are feeling weary. And I want to read that for you. It was the group of shepherds, and they're out in the field at night watching their sheep sleep. If there's anything more wearying than watching a sleep sheep, a uh, sheep sleep, I don't know what that is. Let me read this for you. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Out of nowhere, in front of these uh, shepherds on this weary night, this angel appears. And we've heard this story so many times, I think, that we just kind of say, well, of course the angel appeared. That's the angel's cue to appear to the shepherds and bring them the news. But that's not how it goes. That, that they were not expecting this at all. As far as they know, nobody has seen an angel for the last 400 years. I mean, this would be like if an alien showed up with you right now in your living room and just started chomping down on some of your lint chocolates and saying, hey, how's it going? I mean, you would be in shock. You'd be terrified. You'd say to someone, do you see what I see? <laughs> do you see what I see? Are you seeing this? Is this really happening? I mean, come on, that you just wouldn't be able to believe it. And you'd probably be a bit, little bit shocked or terrified as well. If you're watching with someone else, go ahead and just nudge them a little bit right now and wake them up and say, okay, that was the weary part, but now do you feel that thrill of hope, that, that excitement, that wonder? Is this really happening as we move towards the rejoicing? When's the last time you had some really great news? I mean, when's the last time you heard something and it filled you with joy, where you're just pumping your arms, yes, 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 yes. My son Judah is five, and he does that. If something goes his way, yes! I mean, it could be that we're making his favorite food for dinner or that he found a gummy bear under the couch. Doesn't matter what. Yes, yes! I mean, when's the last time you had some news so good you were just dancing around the living room or, or singing to yourself or you're phoning somebody up saying, I've got to tell you this great news. The angel says exactly that that there is good news. The interesting thing about good news is normally when there's uh, good news, it's not good for everybody. I mean, for example, let's say you find out that you've won the lottery. Well, that's great news for you and you're dancing around, but it means like good for you, you win. Everyone else who bought a ticket, sorry, you lost. Try again next week. You win, yay, you all lost, boo. Or think about getting a new job, right? Hey, you got the job. Yes, yes, yes. Everyone else who applied, you're still looking. You didn't get this one. Boo. I mean, so often when news is good for someone, it's not good for someone else. But the angel said that this is going to be good news that will cause great joy for all the people, for everyone, all the people. Here's the next good thing about this news the next great thing 
it happened today. The angel says, today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you today. So often when we have good news, it's some distant thing we have to keep waiting or hoping for. Like, okay, kids, in the year 2025, we're all going to Disneyland. Yay, how long away is that? Uh, four years. You know, or it's like when we hear announcements from some leader, by the year 2050, Canada is going to be totally emission free and the air is going to be so pure, no Canadians even going to have bad breath anymore. And you scratch your head and say, really? Like, is that really going to play out? It's so far away. But not with this news. This news has already happened. It's already taken place. Hey, today this has happened. The angel goes on to say that today a savior has been born to you. It's not a word we use very often. What's a savior? What does a savior do? Save someone. Save someone from their time of need, whatever the situation might be. I mean, if you were drowning in the middle of a lake, the savior would be the person who would come out to you, pull you up and make sure that you were breathing. That would be your savior. If you were starving, the Savior might be the person who scoops up their turkey dinner, brings it to you with all the fixings, and gives you something to eat. But if you're drowning in the middle of the lake, and someone comes out with you, to you with a stuffed turkey, throws it to you, pours some gravy on your head, and speeds away, that's not helpful, right? That's not the Savior that you need. And if this Savior is somehow going to cause great joy for all the people, for everyone, it means that they need to be saving us from something we all have in common. Something that's affecting all of us. Do you remember a, a year ago when COVID first uh, became a thing that we were aware of and they started listing all the possible symptoms to check for? Do you remember that? It was like such a big list. It was like, if you're feeling fatigued, if you've got a cough, if you're having chest pains, if you've got diarrhea, if you've got a runny nose, if you're experiencing hair loss or hair gain, weight loss, weight gain, I mean, if you're sweating a lot, if you've got bad BO, it seemed like whatever the symptom might be, that's COVID. Oh yeah, you've got COVID. It didn't matter what it was. That's sin. That's sin for us, where we look and there's just all of these symptoms, all these things we can look at and say, man, that's it, and that's it, and that's it. But it all traces back to sin. Sin is a reality that there's this brokenness inside of us that we cannot fix on our own. That there's this brokenness that cuts us off from God. And it always puts a barrier in between us and other people. That's what Jesus comes to fix. That's what he comes to solve and save us from. I mean, that's why God tells Joseph that you're to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. Well, how's a baby supposed to do that? It's because this baby was different. Okay, and I know uh, you're going to say, well, all of us are unique. We're all like uh, individual snowflakes and all of that's true. And, and God bless you for that. But this baby was different in an altogether different way because this baby was both God and man at the same time. I mean, we hear that in the Christmas story that he will be called great and will be called the son of the most high. Son of the Most High means that he's of the same substance, the same stuff, the same DNA. We talked about that just last week, that there's this connection because they're one and the same. This child, this baby is different than any other baby ever because God pours himself into this baby and he's perfectly God and he's perfectly man at the same time. That's why they call him Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God with us. That in this baby, God has come from heaven to earth to be with us. You know, we all have this brokenness. We all have this, this heartbreak, this issue, this division inside of us called sin. And there's all sorts of symptoms. We can look around and point our fingers at all sorts of different things and say, there it is. But somehow Jesus comes to fix that. Somehow this little baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger grows up. And he grows up to 
uh, perfectly fulfill all of God's will on his life, to never sin, to never fall trapped to temptation. And he'll end up going to the cross where he pays the penalty of sin there for us. They lay him in a grave, and then three days later, he comes back to life. Jesus doesn't just have the cure for sin. Jesus is the cure. Let me read this for you. This is from 1 John chapter 4, verse 9, and I just love the way that he writes it for us. He says this, This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. We live through Jesus. We have life through him. When we put our faith in him, our, our hope in him, when we trust in him, then suddenly we have this life, this new life where the issue of sin, even though there's some symptoms that still linger, has actually been resolved because he's already paid the penalty in full. You know, I know for some people, their thrill of hope was when it was announced that there's a vaccine uh, for COVID and that just fills them with this excitement. And I forget what the percentages are. They're saying it's 90%, even more effective, they think. But Jesus is effective 100% of the time. Jesus saves 100% of the time for everyone who trusts in him absolutely every single time. He never, ever fails and never, ever will. I mean, just think about those percentages. Think about those chances you have. You could find all sorts of other things to trust in, but this one is 100% guaranteed every single time. Sin infects all of us. In the end, sin kills all of us. But Jesus is the cure, and he's 100% effective. Do you remember what the shepherds do once the angels leave? It says that when they hear the good news, they can't hold themselves back. They have to go check it out. I want to read this last passage for you from the Christmas story. Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Remember how these guys started out? I mean, these guys were weary out in the field watching a bunch of sheep sleeping. Then the angel appears and it fills them with this excitement. And then they go and see Jesus and they come back rejoicing. The thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices. Church, I hope that tonight you feel that thrill of hope as you hear the Christmas story again about this God who loves you so much that he comes for you to rescue you from the problem that all of us have. I hope that as you hear about this Jesus who is 100% effective, that that leads you to rejoicing. And there's so many great things to celebrate in tonight and all, all the food and the baking and the presents and the lights and the trees and the people that you're uh, getting to see or Zoom call with or whatever it is. But I hope that you rejoice in this Jesus, the one and only Savior of the world, the thrill of hope, a weary world rejoices. You know, before I pray, I want to give you an assignment. I want to invite you into the shepherd's story. Normally, we'd be gathered together with uh, all of our loved ones. We'd get to interact with them face to face. But tonight, that's not the case for all of you. And so I would encourage you to do this, if you would. I'd invite you to, to phone three people, to text three people, to reach out to three people and pass on this thrill, this hope that we have in Jesus. Maybe you could send them a text that just says this. Jesus is the cure, 100% effective. Right, and just see how they respond to that. See how that stirs their imaginations or their creativity. Or, or maybe you send them something like this. A weary world rejoices. Jesus is born. Send them something. Hook them into the Christmas story so that they too can have the thrill of hope and turn to rejoicing. Let's pray together. 
Dear God, we thank you so much that you love us so much. And we see that in the, in the words of the Christmas story as we think again about you coming to us and meeting us in our time of need. God, we, I think that we can just relate to that so well. The weariness, the brokenness, the frustration, the anger, all, all these things that each of us are carrying. Lord, we pray tonight as we go through the Christmas story again, as we've heard about the angels, as we've heard about you coming for us. Lord, I pray that you'd give us that thrill once again. And maybe for some people watching, they've been Christians just forever, right? And this is their 80th or 90th Christmas hearing the Christmas story. Lord, I pray for them that it, there would be this thrill that it would come alive again as they hear about your incredible love. And God, I pray for those people who are maybe hearing this story for the very first time and they've got questions and doubts and they've seen a blog or they read a thing online or whatever it is. Lord, I pray that you would just spark that thrill of hope and that in the end that they would be able to rejoice in you. Lord, for all those things in our hearts and minds tonight, we ask that you would be with us we just want to hand all those things over to you, knowing that you're good and that you love us and that you're present with us. And together we pray the prayer that your son Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We're going to wrap up our time together now just by singing a few Christmas carols together. And I don't want you to hold anything back, okay? If you got the recorder, play it. If you're going to light a candle, I'd encourage you to get that now so you're ready. That's going to be uh, our second song in the set. Sing loud. Let's sing up, raising our voices past the rooftops, straight up to heaven. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appears and the soul felt its worth. A thrill of hope a weary world rejoices for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn fall on your knees oh hear the angel voices oh now When Christ was born, oh, night, holy night, oh, night, oh, night divine. Truly he taught us to love one another, his law is love and his gospel is peace chain shall he break for the slave is our brother and in his name all oppression shall cease sweet hymns of joy in grateful chorus raise thee, let all within 
and us praise His holy name. Christ is the Lord. Oh, praise His name forever. Oh, night divine. Oh, night when Christ was born. Oh, night, holy night, oh, night, oh, night divine. Let's do it one more time and go for it. Oh, night, holy night, oh, night, oh, night divine.
receive a blessing before we sing our closing song. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Thanks so much for joining me this Christmas Eve. We're going to end the night singing our hearts out. Joy to the world. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the earth, the Savior reigns. Let all their songs employ What fields and floods, rocks, hills and plains Repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy Repeat, repeat the sounding joy No more let sin and sorrows grow Nor thorns infest the ground he comes to make his blessings flow. Far as the curse is found, far as the curse is found, far as, far as the curse is found. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove. The glories of His righteousness And wonders of His love And wonders of His love And wonders, wonders of His love And wonders of His love Oh, and wonders of His love And wonders, wonders of His love Merry Christmas, everybody. Have a great night.